I didn't hear the second quarter. Um, I'm Michael Bailey. Um, my ITL came from the Texas Bureau of Learning Styles. And first, to start out with, I want to define what a learning style actually is. Okay, so learning style is an, an individual's mode of gaining knowledge or the preferred or best method of gaining knowledge. Now, with this, before I start or go to the next slide, I want to explain how I kind of came to this question. Um, I am in physics too and calculus. Ooh. And with that combination, I it dawned on me that they need more time dedicated to them than anything else. I'm like, not back up classes, but other core classes. And, <laughs> and with that, I was thinking, well, maybe like physics, if I like do something physically and then write it down, I'll understand it better if I'm listening to music or something like that. Same thing applies to calculus. So as I was doing this, I was looking up learning styles and what would actually help me. And then I dawned on the question of this. What ways do babies actually learn how to learn? Now, don't get me wrong. I know we go up to a desk, chew on it. Okay, it's solid. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I understand that. Babies do a lot of observation with their hands. <laughs> but in developing a learning style, we all say that, you know, oh, I'm doing really good at music or something like that. So I would like to see what are some of the learning styles that best fit some of you guys. Like, you can give me examples. I'm pretty sure yours is right to get out, but go ahead. I actually distinctly remember in like eighth grade we took a learning inventory and I we had to like tally how we best learn and my answer was evenly split between the auditory, the tactile, and the visual learning. Like I am all three. <laughs> I'm a very like hands-on kind of person. I learn a lot when I'm uh, like physically doing something. Oh, you remember the word kinesthetic, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank um, you. I don't know who had to, I will take two more, so I'll go Sam. And you haven't spoken about it. All right. Um, like, I know that in math, if I don't understand something at first, and I see, and I ask someone to like, work it out for me, and I see their, if I can see how they did it, then I can usually understand it. Or like, I don't know, even the church band, if like someone's singing something, I can't get it. Like, they'll sing it, and then I'll listen to it, and then so, I'll sing it. And it's visual. Just, like, I guess I would see it. I'm more visual. I see it. Okay. I guess I'm the same thing. Like, if someone was to stand up here and like lecture without like any like presentation or anything, I, I probably nothing like, I would never understand anything, but then like, if it's like in math or like science, and then it's like put up there and I can see it. Then, yeah. Okay, I'm glad both of you guys point out the topic of math, not because that's what I have difficulty with, but because you have gave into my presentation of some learning style are better with certain areas that you're learning about. So. Okay, so my actual question. To what extent does learning according to one's learning style increase their learning effectiveness? As we all said, you know, Billy believes that he's um, better with his kinesthetic when able to do it hands-on. Um, Sam and Alicia just brought up the fact that if you're just putting words out there, it's not going to sink in, but, you know, going with math, you can see how they did it step by step, process one, two, three. Then you can probably follow the logic, so that makes you more of a logical at learning. With this, I found a, another question. Um, <coughs> how do learning styles, if at all, and under what circumstances do they mix? You guys mentioned that um, that you have math or whatever, but if if you do have a presentation, Mr. Lindhart for psychology, where he's just talking to you, how do you actually absorb all the information he's throwing at you really fast? You have the auditory that he's you have the auditory that he's giving you. But you also have to, you know, like we did, to take you the outline for extra credit and like have the little notes in front of you to make sure a visual learner. And then if it doesn't make sense, like the reaction of a neuron, if it doesn't make sense, you have to find another way for that math to make sense from positive seven to negative seven. So then you have a logical standpoint from there. Now, with this, how do ones, how do learning styles change one's perception of how much they think they're learning? Like you said, you believe that if you're doing something hands-on, then you're actually obtaining more information. But have you? Tested or got anything to prove that? Uh, kind what? of. <laughs> Hold on, this is second. Am I supposed to answer that? Uh, I mean, do you, do, do you feel like, or have you done a comparison where you got something hands on and you automatically know you want something better? 
if you do it hands on, then take a picture of the book. Yeah, considering I'm sorry if I'm going to bring up cars and motorcycles. I feel like I do that every class, but yeah, I when I when I'm working on my motorcycle, I have a book where I can read how to disassemble everything. But then when it actually comes down to physically taking it all apart, I can I can physically feel and I can see everything that is physically coming apart and not just reading about it and imagining. It. Okay. Sorry so, for bringing up me vehicles. No problem. Now, I would like to go to Taylor, because I was pretty sure somebody was going to have all balance. What makes you believe that you're in eighth grade? I know it's a couple years back, but what, what skews you into believing that you were a balanced and auditory visual instead? Well, I found a lot more lately, I think, that I learned better by actually doing something. Because like with this site outlines, a lot of people don't read when the reading is assigned, or a lot of people last year wouldn't do their outlines until the night before the test. But if I'm sitting there and just reading a textbook and not taking notes, it goes like straight past my eyes, not in the back of my head. But if I sit there and I jot down notes as I'm reading, or if I look at a PowerPoint and I jot down, jot down notes as they go through the slide, I find that it's a lot easier for me. And it's kind of a combination with that with between visual and tactile, because I'm actually, instead of just reading it, I'm, I'm writing it down. I'm like imprinting it to my brain by writing it down. So I, just, I feel a lot more on top of it when I do that. Okay, Okay, um, these are the seven different learning styles. As we mentioned, you know, visual, oral is like preferring to sound and music. Verbal is preferring to write it down, as for the other dudes to see it out there. Physics, kinesthetic, doing it with your hands. Logical is more applied to mathematics, where it's like this plus this equals this. Cut and dry, it makes things move on. And then you have social and solitary, where if you prefer to learn in groups, kind of like the extrovert and introvert thing, or if you prefer prefer to learn by yourself. These definitions came from this diagram. Now, although this is not actually answering my question, I thought it would be very interesting for you guys to know that it is controversial that some of the, or the diagram for the areas of knowing is very much like based off of the learning styles that go with how learners are supposed to learn. Yeah. Um, only with the combine of social and solitary, that will be combined into one box and put up there and it will give you the circle instead of looking at the Okay, now with this, um, there, was, there has been research done to prove that learning styles don't actually exist. For example, you said you do things hands on. So anything that has any kind of sound related to it means that you wouldn't be able to get it because you're better with hands on stuff. Here's my point. This guy does a uh, study for University of Oklahoma, I want to believe. But um, he does a study with a group of people that gives them different tests to apply for the different learning styles. And overall, it's like, if you are one learning style, you will not learn the difference between my voice and Richie's voice, because that's an artist word based thing. Or you will not learn the difference between Sarah's handwriting and Jenny's handwriting. That's very visual and uh, hard concept. Now, I'm about to hopefully have this timed up right to show you. But that fact isn't really all that important yeah. for teachers because most of what teachers want students to learn is not particularly visual or auditory or kinesthetic. Most of what teachers want students to learn is based on meaning. The second point concerns the particular prediction of the theory. The important prediction of the theory is not that some people have better visual memory than other people. The prediction is that those people with a good visual memory will always learn better if you present things visually. But that idea is clearly wrong. When you've got something that you want students to learn that's especially visual, like the shape of a country on a map, everybody needs to see a visual presentation, not just those people who have really good visual memory. Okay, so if the theory is wrong, as I'm claiming, why does it seem so right? One reason is that everyone believes it, not just teachers. The theory is accepted by about 90% of the students at the University of Virginia. Second reason people believe it is that something close to the theory is right. People can learn in different ways, and some people are especially good at learning certain types of information. But the specific predictions of the theory and the way that you would apply it in the classroom are wrong. A third reason this theory seems right is that if you already believe it, you'll probably interpret ambiguous situations as consistent with the theory. For example, suppose you're talking to a student about the structure of the atom, but it's not really clicking. Finally, you say, picture the solar system. The nucleus of an atom is like the sun, and the electrons are like the planets spinning around it. The student understands, and you think, aha, he must be a visual learner. But maybe that was just a...